Doc Rivers and uh, the Clippers decide to part ways not 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 much longer after that. He gets the job that we spoke about D'Antoni being a favorite to get last week. And we both agreed that we didn't think D'Antoni um, should be the be the guy to, to get get that job. Um, I'm actually okay with Doc Rivers getting getting that job, um, even though even though it happened mad mad quick. But I'm actually okay with Doc Rivers because at least with Doc Rivers, he's a champion. Um, he knows what it takes to to win. Um, you know, he's dealt with the, with the superstar egos and, and that, and that level, that caliber of players. So I think he can deal with Embiid and Ben Simmons. Um, then, you know, when you add in the fact that they also have Tobias Harris, who actually had his best year, um, statistically under the coaching of Doc Rivers. So I think he can actually do pretty well for those guys, but I, 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 I think somebody's going to get moved this, this year. Either Ben Simmons or Embiid, I think one of those guys is is, is going to be out, be out of Philly. Um, yeah, I I was a little disappointed because actually the last time we we had the the sports convo uh, when we did a collaboration with Real Fans Real Talking the Sanchez Show, the news of Doc Rivers actually broke maybe like two hours after we got off air, <laughs> yeah. so we didn't get to give our immediate opinions on it. But I will say, um, I'm interested to see how it plays out because for Doc Rivers. This is a tricky situation you're going into. As you said, there's already a lot of talk of trading one of your two stars. Um, Doc is going to have to go over there without his coaching staff because it looks like Ty Lue is the front runner for the Clippers and the Pelicans. It -hmm. also looks like Sam Cassell is uh, in the running for the Houston job, and those are his two top assistants. Another man that that has been on his coaching staff won't be available either. That was Mike Woodson because Mike Woodson is already part of Thibodeau's staff with the Knicks. So, if you're a doc, you're going in a situation where you have these two very good, very young stars who everyone keeps claiming one of them has to be traded. And then you won't have your veteran coaching staff with you. So there's going to be a lot of uncertainty around how this team is developed and coached. Um, you mentioned it, and I talked about it on a recent episode of the Sanchez show. I do feel somebody is going to get traded, but the guy I think is going to be traded is Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris and doc have a history back to the Clipper days. Um, I don't know how well they got along. However, I do know that Tobias wanted more money than they were willing to offer him. And they ultimately ended up trading him to the Sixers for Landry Shamit and a future first. So I would not be surprised if Doc and Elton Brand figure out a way to trade Tobias Harris, who has about four years left on his deal, to bring in their quote unquote third star. And I like Tobias Harris, but I would not be surprised, and I want to be on record as saying this because I have a feeling these both these guys' names are going to be floated around. I would not be surprised if Tobias Harris is involved in a trade for either Chris Paul or Paul George. I, I could see either one of those trades happening. Uh, Philly really liked Paul George two years ago when he was a free agent before he re-signed with Oklahoma City, and I think Paul George would be the perfect third star for Philly because obviously we know he can shoot from range. He's another ball handler. He becomes an interchangeable wing player that can play with Ben Simmons. So you don't, you're not taking anything away from Ben. You're actually adding another ball handler who can shoot from three. Uh, the Chris Paul one intrigues me the most though, because I still think that the way you build the team around Ben Simmons is similar to what Dallas is doing with Luca. You can play traditional guards next to a guy like Ben Simmons because Ben Simmons is 6'9", 6'10". So he's not your prototypical 6'3 point guard. He's 6'10". So to bring in a guy like Chris Paul who's 6'1", 6'2", but can shoot and give you veteran leadership and a guy who can take the ball out of Ben's hands late so that everything doesn't run through Ben would be interesting. And I mentioned both those guys because they have that connection to Doc Rivers. So I think Tobias might be the guy they look to move, but ultimately the Philly situation is very interesting to see how it's going to play out, whether one of their stars get traded, who does Doc keep on his roster uh, as coaching staff, I should say. And then also, as we talked about, the East is going to be tougher next year. So if this team falls apart early next year, do they make a trade immediately? I think that Doc Rivers will be able to handle it, and you know I'm, I'm glad he, I'm glad he bounced back um, as quick as he did. Just because, I, you know, with the Clippers losing and blowing that three one lead, you know, even though Doc Rivers took the the onus and he put he put everything on his shoulders, Doc Rivers wasn't out there shooting threes at the side of the basket. You know, Doc Rivers didn't tell Lou Williams to stop. You know what I'm saying? And get some of them wings. You know, even though we ain't mad at him for it, but you know, because it's a good spot to get some wings at. But you know, he wasn't responsible for that, you know, for that, you know. 
you know, it's a fush, unfortunate, you know, Montrez, he lost his grandmother, rest in peace, condolences, but he doesn't have control over that. And, and we saw Montrez coming back into the bubble. He wasn't, he wasn't the same. He wasn't the sixth man of the year that they had seen all season. You know, it's Patrick Beverly gets hurt. He's one of your top defenders, and he's he's one of those energy guys that can just get anybody riled up, and he can frustrate anybody on the opposite team. You know, when a season ago, when when they took those two games from from Golden State, you know, Patrick Beverly was 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 all over uh, Kevin Durant, John, and and talking and talking smack and whatnot, and and, and kind of pushed him over the edge. So, you know, I would have liked to see maybe one more year of docking these guys together, um, you know, but again, this is what happens when you build your team to be a particular team, as opposed to building the best team that you can build. This, this is a possibility that can happen. Now, I mean, come, losing a three, three to one lead. I mean, that's, that's the extreme of the extreme, but you know, again, I would have still tried to keep docking and let him get one more run at it, but you know, it, it is what it is. He's moving on. Motherfucker, this is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. You watch your real fans, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Uh-huh. This is real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real 